Hey everyone! In this video we'll show how to use uDraper simulation cache functionality. For this tutorial we are going to use this dress and this fancy jacket. A key prerequisite for the cache recording is to have garment simulation enabled. So before we start recording the cache, let's make sure that the simulation box is checked for both garments. Let's open an animation sequence with a ballet dancing animation. We need to add garment tracks and then trigger event tracks for our garment 0 and garment 1. If we want the final video to be recorded at 60 FPS, we better capture the cache at the same FPS as well. Now for each garment, we need to create a cache starting event. For this video we start at the first frame, but you can start from an arbitrary frame. Right click on the new event and select properties, quick bind, type cache and select the garment cache function. Unreal Editor creates a new custom event in the director's blueprint connected to the garment cache function. Let's rename this event as cache simulation and then save and compile the blueprint. Back to the sequencer, right-click on the new event and enter the folder name where you want to store your cache files. Let's call this folder 001. If you enter just a file name, the cache will be stored in your garment folder. If you want to store it elsewhere, you need to specify a full path to a new folder to store your cache. Repeat the same steps for the second garment and select our new cache garment function that we just created. Alternatively, you can copy and paste this event from the garment 0 to garment 1. We also need to specify the last frame where we want to finish caching. I'm going to the end of this sequence and add new events for our garments. Again, we right-click on our events and bind them to our new cache garment function. This time we leave the folder empty. This will indicate that this is the last frame for this cache. Now we are ready to capture our simulation cache, but before we do so, let's double check our settings. Consider our final frame rate. If we create a cache at 60 FPS, we should be ok to render the final videos at 30, 60 or 120 FPS. Make sure the garments have their simulation settings enabled, otherwise the simulation is not going to start and the cache won't be recorded. To record the simulation cache, we need to use either Movie Scene Capture or Movie Render Queue to render this animation. We can use the minimal settings for the video and click Create Movie. While the video is rendering, the cache is being created. When the rendering is done, we can check out the cache folder. We see that the folder 001 has been created and it contains 2666 files which is equal to the number of frames in our sequence. This indicates that the cache was created correctly. Now we can play back our simulation. For that purpose we need to disable the simulation for our garments. Also note that the simulation cache is designed for rendering movies and there is no guarantee that it will work well during a real-time presentation. Nonetheless, we can still try a quick check of the cache we've just captured. For more dramatic effect, 
let's adjust the lighting to see the emissive material effect. So we need to click play the current level, wait a couple of seconds, and then we can play our sequence. This time we are in luck because the close simulation cache is playing in sync with the character animation. However, in other cases it may not be so, depending on your real-time hardware performance. At this point, when we are happy with our simulation cache, we can take it to another level, no pun intended. We make sure that the garment simulation is turned off. Open our sequence and make sure that the FPS rate is the same as we used for capturing the cache. We add and configure the cache events the same way as we did before. For starting events, we enter the folder names 001, where we stored the cache earlier in this video. This time, we can use the movie render queue for the high quality rendering. Here we explicitly specify 60 FPS, although we can also use 30 or 120 FPS, depending on our requirements. For instance, we also rendered the same video at 120 FPS to play it in slow motion later. You may also want to override anti-aliasing settings. It seems that if we set spatial sample count equal to 8 and leave temporal equal to 1, we can get a decent result. Because of epic anti-aliasing override algorithm, we have some issues with the frame synchronization when using temporal sample count other than 1. And this concludes our tutorial on using simulation cache with UDraper. Let us know if you have any questions and share your own UDraper projects. Thanks for watching!